you god bless you uh over to you brother uh, david god bless you i want to uh, greet uh, everyone in the wonderful name of our lord and savior jesus christ i believe uh, the saints are happy and uh they are well I just want to say those who are following us on different platforms, may the Lord bless you. So before I, I begin the discussion, before I say a lot of things, I will give time to Pastor Shirega just to officially uh, introduce uh, our discussion uh, for tonight and uh, greet the uh, pastor. Okay. Uh, God bless you. God bless you, uh, Brother David. We appreciate um, the grace of the Lord that we are here uh, to just uh, have a wonderful time in the, in the things of God. So uh, we're just waiting for uh, Reverend uh, Dr. Mobile Nguenya uh, to join us. Uh, we can't wait. Uh, we're just waiting for uh, for him to uh, come online there. Uh, he's already joined in. Uh, we're just waiting for him so that we can uh, introduce. Uh, maybe Brother David, um, you can just uh, pray for us. Is uh, I'm sure by the time you finish praying, uh, the uh, the man of God will be ready so that we can uh, introduce him. Uh, maybe over to you, Brother David. Wonderful, let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, we come before your throne this evening, appreciating your love, appreciating your grace, appreciating Heavenly Father, the gift of life, and all the things you are doing, Heavenly Father, in our lives. Oh God, we are so thankful. The word of God, Lord, even the prophet and the message of the hour, we are so thankful in our hearts, Lord. As we are now gathered again this evening, I pray, Lord Jesus Christ, that you come and manifest yourself among us, oh God. We know, Lord Jesus Christ, as believers, we might have lingering questions. Even the Father thinks that we want to hear uh, the ministers, Lord, say, we pray, Heaven Father, that you come, Lord Jesus Christ, anoint the minister, anoint the hearers, Lord, bless them, O oh Father. I believe, Lord Jesus Christ, this discussion, Lord, will be a stepping stone to somebody's life, those who are following and those who shall listen. I pray, believing and trusting in your holy name. Amen. Okay, uh, God bless you, God bless you. Uh, so we are happy uh, today uh, to be gathered in the name of the Lord uh, on this uh, platform, uh, just uh, to uh, talk about, uh, you know, um, matters around uh, courtship and uh, uh, marriage. Uh, so to assist us uh, to do that, we have got a wonderful servant of the Lord uh, who uh, God uses mightily in that area. 
uh, he has been uh, uh, having a number of uh, sessions uh, where he uh, encourages the young people, uh, encourages uh, couples. So we thought that uh, the Lord would certainly bless us uh, if uh, uh, Reverend uh, Doc Ngwenya uh, is uh, joining us uh, today. Uh, uh, Dr. Ngwenya, are you, are you ready? I know that uh, they are also uh, streaming to their uh, platforms uh, from their site. So it could be that uh, uh, they're just uh, getting their connection ready there. So we are awaiting for that. Maybe while we are waiting for uh, a doc to, 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 to come, uh, let's uh, just uh, do some uh, opening remarks. Yeah, we know brother David uh, for the subject that we are, we are having tonight. Uh, it's a very, very, uh, you know, touchy subject for all of us. We know that uh, marriage in itself uh, was uh, instituted by, uh, by God for his children. So marriage has got its origins, uh, you know, in the, in, the, in the word of God. And uh, normally when we follow the word of God and the guidelines that we uh, get from the word of God, uh, that's actually one of the greatest blessings that uh, God uh, can uh, give uh, to, to his uh, children. So, you know, the prophet of God, uh, Brother Branham, uh, he says that, uh, you know, outside of uh, uh, salvation, uh, you know, God can give you a wonderful partner uh, that is either a brother or a sister. So to me, outside of my uh, salvation, uh, God gave me a wife. So a sister can also say that. So outside, say that, so outside, say that, so outside, say that, so say that. So All right. Okay, I think there is one mic that needed to be um, uh, to be muted there. I think that, oh, we are happy now. Uh, we are now connected to, uh, to uh, Bulawayo, uh, City Tebaneko, and uh, we've got a wonderful servant of God there who's doing a wonderful work. He has not started just with the lockdown. Uh, he's been consistent, uh, working for the Lord, missionary fields, physically and online and virtually. Uh, so today we are very happy. Uh, 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 Pastor Nguenya, we just want to uh, welcome you to the program today. Uh, uh, let me call you by your uh, uh, title, uh, Reverend uh, Dr. Nguenya. Uh, Reverend, because you are a man of God. Doctor, because you studied medicine uh, and you are a wonderful child of God. So we really appreciate you uh, today. I'm honored here uh, on the platform. I've got two doctors here. Uh, Dr. Nguenya and uh, Dr. Mshanga. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, uh, Brother Mshanga is also a doctor, uh, but he will never give you panado or, or dissect you. He's an academic one. He, he's into uh, economics and all that. So we are very happy to see children of God progressing also on the academic uh, front, still being humble and serving God faithfully. Uh, Dr. Nguenya, we uh, would you just want to uh, greet uh, the believers and uh, just uh, you know just your brief intro and message principles and being taught that's why you should not enter marriage unadvisable but discreetly in fear of God and well advised. It will protect you and your testimony. Over to you, Reverend. Yeah, maybe you can write. Oh, wonderful. May the Lord richly bless you. Now, before I move on to another question, Pastor Shreka, do you have, I think you uh, want to comment a little bit before we move on. Those who are saying no sound, are they, is it? Okay, uh, God bless you, God bless you. Uh, yeah, it has already started on the I not here. Uh, you know, you have got to know your God first, uh, like what uh, uh, Reverend uh, Nguenya has just said there. Uh, you have got to know your God first, and you have got to have a communication with him. If you know him on, uh, you know, uh, every day, other things, he will also help you, uh, especially on that issue of marriage. 
I think uh, I don't want to comment too much here. I want to see how much we can uh, drain, how much we can absorb uh, from uh, uh, from uh, 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 Dr. Tanguenya here, because uh, I know that uh, that's a subject uh, that he has really addressed. Uh, so I think let's proceed there, Brother David. Oh, wonderful. Now, uh, of course, Pastor, you, you, you came with some uh, wonderful words there that you must have a relationship with God first before you even enter a courtship. Now, but we hear that uh, Brother Branham says, uh, for a believer uh, to marry an unbeliever. So I want to hear from you, Pastor, what are the dangers uh, of a believer, a brother uh, who is a message believer now to marry an unbeliever or to date unbelievers? Over to you, Pastor. unbeliever we have a clear cut example in the bible because of when we see ahab who was an uh, israelite who married again you can start again when you started uh, your mind was muted is it on now is it on now is it on now? But i think there are two that are right. open uh, close to each other right is it on right so a believer marrying an unbeliever with an example in the in the bible of ab was an israelite who married jezebel and he did not manage to pull jezebel to living an israelite uh, life but jezebel pulled him to live a pagan life so a little even we live in the lamp a believer must marry an, a, a believer of course, in church, there are three kinds of believers. So even in church, you can marry an unbeliever. You can marry a make believer. So you must, there must be a deep calling to a deep. And the kind of person that you marry, it reflects who you are and the kind of person who you are. So the dangers is that you, you have a wrong uh, atmosphere of her at home because marriage is the backbone of the nation. It is the backbone of church life. If marriage is are, are wrong, it affects even the church atmosphere. It affects even the upbringing of children. It shows the kind of person who be a mother to your children. So you, you, the teachings that will be given to the children, if the fifth gospel is not a gospel, if you have married an unbeliever, a girl, so the fifth gospel to the children is not a gospel at all because she is not a believer. And the man, if he is not a believer, is going to bring wrong influence. That's why you have homes where there is conflict of influences. The father is teaching people this way and the mother is teaching people that way. Home is a culture medium for the raising of children in holy admonition, knowing God. So when there is an unequal yoke, uh, of a donkey and an ox moving together in marriage, things will never be even. Over to you, yes. Wonderful. Wonderful. Now, I uh, thank you so much, Pastor Nguyenya. Uh, you, you raised an important uh, uh, point here, saying even in church, you can marry an unbeliever or you can marry a make-believer. Now I want to hear from you, uh, Pastor. Now, what what are some of the conditions that can force uh, a brother who is uh, really serious on the way to marry an, a make believer or unbeliever in church? Over to you, Pastor. That's an interesting one. Of course, there are holes in sheep clothing. When we see the outside mask without discerning the person who is inside the mask, we can fall into a pit, into danger. So when men, uh, the prophet says, when a man is going to marry, he must watch, he must pray. In other words, he must seek guidance from God. Otherwise, many people know the idea of a good wife and the idea of a good husband. So they can act it out with a holy mask and a church mask 
Then until when they say I do, they remove the mask and you discover the kind of person, the real person we are in marriage. So now, because everyone who is in church, not all Israel is Israel, but everyone can lift their hands and say hallelujah. Everyone can dress like a message believer, but their commitment to the word must be tested before marriage. That's why I, I don't understand um, uh, those who fall in courtship because if the brother is failing in commitment to the principles of the word before marriage, he's going to fail after marriage. He has nothing to lose after marriage. You've already signed a contract. But if he is failing to display the nature of Christ, because this whole thing is a mystery concerning Christ and the church. So we, we can only marry bone of our bone and the flesh of our flesh. Whosoever you marry reflects who you are. But there's also deceptions in courtship. Especially these days when people are, are, are seeing online, there are online profiles that look so good and so messagical, but uh, on the ground <laughs> or in the heart, it's a disaster. And the, that sister will hold on to the fake presentation and that brother will hold on to fake presentation when you are married. That's why we are all of a sudden having this thing of hearing about divorce in the marriage, in the message. There was no such a thing because message, it was a contract that we all vow marries you and until death and people will keep their vow. But now because of deceptions in courtship and because of the glittering of beauty without the inward characteristics, I always say that if you don't marry character, you marry quite a character. <laughs> And also you need to be patient until God shows you. And only people pray with one eye open. By the time they come to the pastor or seek a signal from God, their heart has already signed a deal to say that one is the person uh, through beauty. When God says whatever fleece is made is made so cheap so that that girl will qualify. <laughs> so that is the danger that we have that makes us marry the wrong person. And some people hide on the court that say wrongs will be made right in the millennium. <laughs> so they are hiding behind that court. Over to you, Doc. Pastor <laughs> Chineka, I saw you. You were <laughs> laughing there. Maybe you have got one or two comments. Uh, I will give time to you now before I move to my next issue. All right, all right. Uh, so we, we, we thank the Lord uh, for what we are hearing. Uh, I think uh, this is good. I think for me today, I am uh, quite, uh, you know, absorbing. Uh, 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 there is a comment there uh, to say uh, the believers would want again uh, uh, Pastor, Pastor Nguena to repeat uh, what are the signs that this one is the right one, this one is the wrong one. You know, he has mentioned that, you know, today, uh, there are these uh, fake uh, online profiles, fake this and that, and then uh, people have problems. I think uh, uh, there are some believers that miss the pastor there on that first uh, uh, question. I think we were having a, a few uh, technical issues there. Uh, so maybe uh, that's how I can utilize my time. I'll comment a little bit later, Brother David. Uh, Reverend Wenya is coming very nicely here. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, the, the question is, how do you know that this is the right one? Right. There's a quote that I saw that the prophet was saying that um, if you can't live without that person, then you don't worry about marrying them. If you can live without them, but if you can't live without them, it also shows that there is something. So it's an issue of compatibility because remember, marriage is the natural side and spiritual side. So it's not only a voice from heaven saying, this is your person, and you discover, oh Lord, why did you say so? There is a natural side where you also must light the person because you are going to wake up every day seeing that same person. And you are not going to wake up and say, Lord, yeah, here we are. But it should be somebody that you love. And then also there's a confirmation from God. I was saying that uh, by now, by the time you get to marriage, you should be knowing how your spiritual antennas pick heavenly signals. It should not be your first attempt 
to hear the voice of God in marriage. It means you have already been working with God so far and you now have heard how God led you in your job, how God led you in other matters of life. Until now, you now know your system, whether it's a dream, whether it's a fleece, how God confirms. But you have a disaster if you are going to seek your first spiritual confirmation as a marriage partner. It means your life by this time must be rich with the heavenly signals that are dependable because God leads in ways uh, that are unique. Not like that brother who said that uh, the woman who is sought my necktie is the right one. Then an ugly one came and just sorted it. She was rebuked because it was a cheap fleece. And when you make a fleece, no friend must hear it. No devil must hear it. It must not be a, a fleece that you say, Lord, whosoever will say I love you is the right person. Then someone comes and says, I love you. He says, God has spoken. That is a cheap fleece. When Eliezer wanted to know that this is the right person, Eliezer said in his heart that the woman, who, I will just tell you one part and say, uh, then, but whosoever will do the unsaid part and water the camels. It was something that you could not easily guess, and a lazy woman was not going to do that. So it was already filtering some people uh, out of that one. So in marriage, there must be a deep calling to a deep. It may not always be spiritual signals, but it may be someone that you love until you cannot live without that person and you have to marry that person. But someone once asked me that, brother, if you can't live without that person, what if they can live without you? <laughs> that is another issue. That's why I say it is a deep calling to the deep. If you find in the Bible about the bride and Christ, it says the spirit is saying come, and the bride is also saying come. That must be what is happening also. When you are saying come, sister, she must also be saying come, brother. Yes, over to you, Rev. Wonderful. Thank you, Pastor Ben. May the Lord richly bless you so much. Uh, let me uh, move uh, to my uh, another issue I have here. You know, on the uh, question I asked you about uh, the danger signs, you emphasize the issue of uh, guidance. You must seek guidance uh, from God. Now, let me move. Let me uh, say this now. What advice in terms of procedures uh, of getting into courtship and marriage? Uh, who is uh, best placed to be consulted? Because we have uh, seen quite a number of people. Some they consult their parents. Some they even go to consult the song leader. Some they consult the deacon. Uh, some, of course, they move uh, to consult the pastor. So who is uh, the the best person to be consulted whenever someone wants to uh, marry. Over to you, Pastor. One, of one. Course. The first consultation is with God. You just come to God, and uh, then God has his agents. And um, it depends on who is wanting to marry here. Usually, the easiest way is the man is wanting to marry and is consulting. But I want to open another way also that the sister is also allowed to want to be married and to start consulting. <laughs> I didn't say to start making steps, but <laughs> to start consulting that, Lord, I'm now 30 years and I want to be married. I want to break this cycle from my family and I'm rejecting this spirit here. And she starts making consultation, speaking to God. And then, of course, the pastor will see you through. And uh, the pastor is easier to approach. But I know that men of God can sometimes be so holy, like a holy mountain you cannot approach. And then the sister in that way is saying, how can I be acceptable with my issue? But we have made sure that men of God are approachable. And people must be ready to open up. They should not burn in the pews and saying, Lord, why am I not finding a marriage partner? 
the marriage is to be entered into advisably, discreetly, in honor of God. So the pastor is placed with all wisdom and spiritual resource and experience to handle those matters. But now congregations differ. You, we don't want to have um, a Zoom copy and paste approach to the matter, but we will say whatever the pastor teaches in that congregation as the angel of the church, that is what will go for that congregation. Sometimes in other congregation in the message, they say, you pray and you connect with God and you can make a move to the sister. That is other message congregations. And even actually in the um, first world uh, countries there, that is how things are done. And then you, the ones who are well taught, even if they are given a leeway to approach the sister, they will go to the pastor. It shows how well taught the man is. But then seeing that in the book of Numbers 30 there from verse two, I think three, uh, the parents can annul a vow. They are given the scriptural power to say if they don't agree with a vow, they can annul it. So it means that some of parents cannot be left out in the picture. Now, the, the, the approaching of parents it should not be the reproaching of parents. It should be in an a orderly manner because some of our parents are not in the message although the sister is in the message, although the brother is in the message. So then, whosoever you are close to, when you want to, to get married, if you are very close to your parents, talk to them and go to the pastor also, talk to him. The pastor cannot be left out. The parents cannot be left out. In, in other congregations, if the pastor is free, he can even allow the deacons to handle the matters if his, his hands are full, he's a, they are helpers also in spiritual matters. But the pastor is the one who carries those matters. I don't know if I left something, Reverend, they will pick it up. God bless you. Uh, no, it's clear. It's clear. Uh, but uh, you, you, you came with uh, another issue here, and this issue is very important. Uh, I, for me, it's my first time. Uh, you say it because I, I know the traditional way that the brother is the one uh, who starts to do the consultation and that, but uh, you say the sister is also allowed. That one is an important point there. But uh, when you were explaining, you say the sister can start to do the consultation with God through prayer. But uh, my question is, do we have uh, any other alternatives where the sister can as well uh, do this consultation apart from prayer? Over to you, Pastor. Um, many people are quick to go to the Bible and say, we have sisters like Ruth and Esther who did real steps and uh, well, that was in the days of types and shadows. If you want to do real steps, you are still in types and shadows. You may live a shadowy life there. But a sister, it is comes and against a character. If she makes real steps and goes around the brother seven times for him to fall in love. But a sister has sacred virtues and chastity that she has. And her behavior around men, we always teach our youth, even girls, that just don't be so cheap. Don't be easy to touch around and be easy to, to text around. Uh, although be sociable within the limits of holiness. So uh, otherwise, we don't expect our sisters to be always bumping with brothers and even bumping with the ministering brothers. And you know, show your character and your spiritual fiber. Now, when we are getting real to say sisters, should not just die and uh, dying inside saying brothers are not approaching because it's so, reality spells it that that sister who is seated in church and no brother is approaching. When she leaves church and goes to the combi, windies are approaching and dread mans are approaching. People are approaching. I think that one is frozen. Uh, people are approaching everywhere from all angles, but the brothers in church are just too busy to approach. I've always taught the brothers to say, 
they must also be relevant and uh, do something, uh, not to just die in lust and burn or in, be in evil habits and pretend that they are doing spiritual things and ignore sisters. So in that case, sister can only move in fasting and in prayers. That motion can be stronger than throwing your head this way or buying a new dress and singing a special because of a new dress. Those are not the best moves. The best moves are when you move in prayer and sincerity and God connects the pieces. You know, as a sister, if you are sincere and you have said, no, uh, God will give me a husband. After this session, as you are praying, that man will never sleep. There was a time when our could not sleep because Esther was moving in prayer. That brother may not sleep. He's going to in inbox person today. Over to you, Doc. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's great. That's great. Now, uh, Pason, we have another issue here. Uh, here we are speaking uh, in relation to brothers and sisters who are single. But uh, in many congregations, we find that uh, we have got uh, convicts and they are single mothers, single sisters with uh, one or two children. Uh, maybe outside of uh, marriage. So how can these people be uh, either consoled, motivated, or assisted? Over to you, Pam. Shalom, uh, I think it was breaking. Can you repeat the question? Can you repeat the question for me so that I can hear it clearly, so that I don't answer near oh, the question? You. Yeah, go ahead, uh, Brother David. I think we hear you. Can you repeat the question? Wonderful, wonderful. Are you hearing me? Can you repeat the question? Okay. I missed part you, of the you question. Hear yeah. Yeah. We hear you, Brad David. Uh, they want you to repeat the uh, to repeat the question. Maybe let me uh, step in here. Uh, the question from uh, Brother uh, David uh, um, was like this: uh, that uh, in some uh, congregations, you will find that some of the converts. Uh, sisters who have got, uh, you know, from previous uh, relationships, maybe in the world or mistakes in life, and they've got uh, uh, children, and then they are in the house of God. Um, I think the question was, how uh, are, are these sisters uh, supposed to be advised? Uh, what is the way forward for them? I think that was the question. Brother David, I think um, I got you right. Yes, yes. Let me pick that one. Right. So the question is, um, the message finds you in whatever state you are in. Sometimes the message finds us in complicated state. It finds someone with a past, but the message is the present. It finds somebody with a, a background, but the message is the, de is the destiny. And it even finds somebody with a, a complicated setup of polygamy and they believe the message. So the message is an answer for whosoever has received the message in whatever state they have received it. Some people come to the message when they are already at advanced stages of being married with a drunkard or with a dread man. In that case, the wisdom of those who are handling that person is that they should not destroy that marriage because the person came in that advanced stage of love. And God knows why things happened like that. Uh, we are not going to say, look, now that you believe this message, I remember when we were, we were starting, we had high zeal, brother. In one church, we, they just told the sister that now that you have received the message, we know Lobola is being paid, but decide now between the message and this dread man. And then lives are wrecked that way because of no wisdom. 
So when the message finds you, uh, some are single mothers, and if they are in a situation that the pastor can read with the courts and scriptures and find that there is nothing binding for this person, well, I know I'm chatting in the dangerous waters there and in very is areas easy to have controversy, but maybe to make the waters easy to walk on, let me say that the presence of a child to this sister that wants to be married is not a, a, like she's an evil person. There are people who are bought and you will never know that they ever had, because remember pregnancy is not the sin. The sin is fornication. Pregnancy, the fact that there's a living child does it mean that this one is more evil than the one who, who has no child in church? It only means that this one has a child, the other one may have even aborted. So we must be clear not to label the new converts who come with children because God has allowed it to be so, it will be under the scrutiny of the pastor to see the dynamics and uh, how that sister can be handled. Those who have a past, if scriptures allow, they can be married in the message, like Ruth who comes in and is married, like Rahab who comes in and is married. Then it will be up to the teachings of the local pastor whether they should aim uh, normally, because I hear sometimes that when you come with a past in some congregations or in some schools of thought, you are told right there that don't aim too high. You can be married to a general member of the church, but not a preacher. <laughs> that one, I'm going to run away from it quickly and come back to the fact that whatever state you are in, if you open up without telling us lies, you can be helped and have marriage. Whether you're a widow, whether you're a widow, whether you have a past, as long as your present is the message, we can weigh basing on facts and on courts and scriptures. We can weigh your potential to be married. Or in other cases, we teach you how to live happily, pleasing God than venturing when you are not supposed to venture in the next step. That one, I'm trying to be uh, uh, very keen on that one because it is a subject. Yes, uh, Brad David, I think we can uh, proceed. Okay, uh, while uh, the brother is getting uh, uh, ready there, maybe let me just uh, also add uh, uh, to what uh, uh, Dr. Nguenya, uh, Pastor Nguenya has said there. Uh, I think uh, that's the best way to, uh, to look at it. Uh, you know, every situation uh, is, in, is unique in its way. And uh, remember, we are serving God under a dispensation of grace. You know, the pastor was talking about uh, Ruth there, how she came in and uh, having a past and the husband they've died, but uh, she was married again, which is very, very scriptural. You also have uh, a, a Rahab, uh, uh, you know, she had a very uh, bad past. Uh, but when she received uh, the message of that hour, you know, she was engrafted into, uh, you know, the Jewish, uh, you know, uh, 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 system, and she was married there, and uh, she, act she actually becomes uh, part uh, of the genealogy that brought uh, David, uh, that brought the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, Brother David, uh, just to agree with uh, what uh, 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 Reverend Wenya was saying there, uh, in, a, in another message, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, from that time, you know, Brother Branham goes to a place uh, where there were insane people uh, who were being kept there, and then found a very good-looking young uh, woman, 
And uh, when they started talking, she actually, uh, Brother Branham realized that, uh, you know, she was actually a patient in there. And she had a very, uh, you know, uh, a bad past. Uh, you know, she had made many mistakes. And uh, to her, she had even ruled out the question of marriage. But uh, Brother Branham did assist her did talk to her, pray for her, and cancel her. And uh, Brother Branham says, after some time, uh, you know, that woman recovered from that sickness and uh, she was actually married with two or three uh, children. So I think, uh, uh, Doc, uh, you just hit it on the nail there. I think uh, we can proceed. Uh, are you fine now, Brother David? You are still muted, Brother David. Uh, unmute yourself. God bless you. Wonderful, wonderful. Yo, I'm trying to, I'm battling with my network here, but I think I can uh, do this question so that I can solve this uh, issue. Now, now we've got uh, another important issue, Pastor, Pastor Nguenya, the issue of Lobora. Of course, in Zimbabwe, we call it Rora. Uh, some, they call it Bridal Prize. Uh, I'm sure this one is a hot topic among the youth. Should a, a believer pay Rora or take for free uh, according to the Bible? Uh, over to you, Pastor. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. We speak where the Bible speaks and we are silent where the Bible is silent. <laughs> right. In terms of Lobola, we find the principle here and there in the Bible, not as a doctrine, but it is a culture that is a good implication because we find that Jacob had to work for seven years for Rachel, when he noticed he was cheated, he worked another seven years. He was not taking for free. Of course, this is culture. Um, in our African culture, we have Lobola Prize. And then there are other cultures in the colored culture, and even in white culture, where they don't practice it. So the argument becomes so easy that um, if you don't want to practice it, you have some people like colored you can approach and you can get without Lobola because they don't practice it well. But anyway, going to the Bible, when search him, um, in Genesis chapter 34, verse 12, uh, wanted Dinah, he said, ask me never so much dowry and gift. I will give according to as you shall say unto me, give me the damsel to wife. That is Genesis 34, verse 12. That is, the, is not an Israelite, it's Sechem. He is saying um, in Genesis 34, verse 12, he's saying, ask me not too much, so much dowry. <laughs> so he says, I will give you according to as you shall say to me. He says he was not going to negotiate, <laughs> but he says, give me the damsel. He was ready to pay what they wanted him to pay. If you go to Exodus 22, verse 17, it says, if your father utterly refused to give it unto him, we, he shall pay money according to the dowry of virgins. So there is money that was being paid there. And let me quickly say that when we talk of Lobola, that is not the value of the woman. The value of human cannot be equated to any money. Her price is above the rupees. She's so, she's above. We don't want to equate women to money, but this is a price. Even when Christ was coming for his bride, at the cross there, he paid the price. So we also don't want parents to merchandise and to, to rise from poverty through Lobola and to get uh, this window to be what they desired in their youth days when they see a man approaching. Maybe to answer that one, allow me for four minutes. 
to play a little animation that I did in that subject, it may answer it very well. I will play the animation on Lobola issues. Uh, and the brothers will be answered in many issues when it comes to Lobola. It's not good for parents to charge too much. And we cannot also control them and say, this is much, this is little. But when a brother is serious with that girl, he can even volunteer extra cows <laughs> because of the love. If my animation is ready, let me play it. We as Christians, are we still bound by cultural practices? Are we expected to pay exorbitant bridal price, even if we are marrying a believer's daughter in church? Is there a Bible verse that can free us? As I said before, I speak where the Bible speaks. I am silent where the Bible is silent. Though I have no direct scripture for or against Tilobola, I see valuable principle in the cultural bridal price, Lobol. Jacob worked seven years intending to get Rachel, his wife, from Lapan, the father-in-law. He then worked another seven years. Our Lord Jesus Christ paid the price at the cross to get his bride, the church. Yet, of course, the value of your sweetheart can't be measured in financial terms, and it is unwise for parents to overcharge Lobola and make it too difficult for those who are trying to follow protocol in marriage without shortcuts of impregnating and eloping. Yet a very grateful and well-prepared man can out of his heart volunteer an extra cow when well handled. There was a young man who went to a far village to pay Lobola. Alas, he found a walled clan of aunties and grannies with money bowls and they had an endless list of charges. After the young man had put all he had in the bowls, approximately $3,000, he was still far from even a quarter of the demands. He persuaded and bargained in tears, expressing to them how he couldn't live without his wife and as a Christian he could not do shortcuts. They flatly refused and ordered him to look for more money and come back before they talk about wedding preparations. The discouraged boy lost it. He gave up and said, <sighs> It seems it's impossible for me in this family. Maybe just give me back all I have paid. Since it's too little, I will try another family. Said to say goodbye to you, sweetheart. I tried, I failed. When he went outside with the money, the aunties and grannies started accusing one another of the lost opportunity to make money in the midst of their poverty. They shouted, calling the boy back, Whatever you can pay us, please, you can take her. She is yours. Even $1,000 for everything is enough. And another thing, my boys, do not borrow suits and cars when going to pay the water. You will be overcharged for nothing. Parents must make life easier for their son-in-laws, avoiding stretched ritualistic churches. We are building a home, not our pockets. Treat him nicely. He will spend more than Lobola in taking care of you from his heart the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> Shalom, I think the man has said more than I could say in that short space of time. Over to you, Doc. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Yeah, the man has said it uh, very uh, clear. So I think Pastor Chireka there wants to comment a little bit before I uh, give you another question. I was going to comment uh, 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 before uh, the men spoke there. Uh, the online uh, pastor just uh, leveled it. And uh, you know, uh, what I just wanted to say is that uh, 
you know, uh, it's all a question of, uh, it's not a, a commandment. Uh, it's uh, what uh, you find, uh, you know, where you are going to uh, get uh, married. And I think uh, the balance that has been brought there to say uh, parents, I believe that some parents are listening. I'm, I'm a parent. I've got uh, some two young girls. Uh, Brother Mklanga, you've got to uh, be there. Uh, I think we are hearing that uh, this is not an opportunity to grow our, our, our pockets. And I think, um, it, you know, it has been just uh, leveled well. It's all a matter of uh, where do you come from and what community are you marrying from? And uh, this is supposed to be just, uh, you know, something that uh, brings the two families together that makes you uh, to understand. In some cases, it's not global. Some people will just say, give us a gift. And uh, that is uh, all right. You know, according to the scriptures that um, the pastor read there, you cannot say it's a sin to, to, to charge uh, a lobola or not to. It's uh, just how uh, people are raised to do it, but it must be done in reasonable terms. I think the online pastor has finished it. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, but uh, uh, you pastors, of course, you are there. Uh, the online pastor uh, nailed it. Now, but I would want you to just uh, state a little bit, uh, one or two uh, of uh, the dangers of uh, charging too high uh, lobola. Because some, they even charge uh, uh, 12,000 US some in runs, they can charge 250,000 runs. So what are the, 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 side, the, the problems associated with those demands? Uh, too high demand. Over to you, but. All right. I'll come in by saying, uh, as I tackle that one, let me also hide behind the finger by saying, high or low is also relative. The brother uh, who is approaching if he is a strange brother to begin with, even if you say 100 US dollars, he's going to cry. So it's a it's a relative. Some people, if you say 12,000, they are going to say, well, thank you. That is a small amount. But anyway, we all know that that is too high. <laughs> that is high. It's, it's not too high. I don't want to judge anyone. It's not too high, but it's somehow high. <laughs> right. The dangers are that I've noted that we make life difficult for somebody who is following protocol. If someone is just, if someone impregnates somebody, they are not usually charged. Uh, if someone impregnates and then he comes and he say, and the girl says he has been found, they say, ah, thank you, at least he's around. But if someone is following protocol, we give big requirements. And many times you find the girl pregnant at home and it disturbs the testimony. So the dangers of that is sometimes the brother is able to pay that uh, 24,000 US dollars. But then he may not be helpful in your families anymore. He's grieved. <laughs> sometimes the brother can be charged just as low as maybe 2,000 3,000 US dollars. And then the brother is now part of the family. Every month is sending something to that family. Every month is supporting those parents. I tell you in a lifetime, he can spend a million on that family. But by receiving too much and grieving the boy, all right, let me also balance it by saying, our boys must never be grieved. They must love parents, whatever happens. They must be able, they must not lo uh, hold lobola crutches. <laughs> that is not a, a way of starting a marriage family relationship. If you have living parents, two of you are obligated to love them and to prove your worth. No matter how they charged you, forgive and send groceries every month. <laughs> so, but anyway, to the parents, the, it's a two-edged sword. It has to cut you also after cutting these ones. Parents, let's show the value of our children. I've also noticed that if your child is being married, let's say in Zimbabwe without labeling people, if I'm a civil servant myself, there's a bracket of income that I have. And the bracket of love is above that bracket of income, yeah? But somehow, without me stealing, I can marry. If people know that 
my daughter is being married by Dr. Nguenya, who is a civil servant, earning this much in this time. It doesn't show how much I shall be in later life. Because in later life, I'll be a millionaire. But right now, maybe I'm earning less than 100 US dollars. So if you are going to wait for me to be a millionaire to afford Lobola, you have missed something. But if you see that this man loves the woman and is going to create a heaven on earth, more than a billionaire who is going to create hell on earth. And again, I'll balance it by saying, it doesn't mean a billionaire makes hell on earth. It doesn't mean a poor person makes heaven on earth. It's about hearts. But I'm saying parents must not judge the current status of the brother. I can come with a torn jacket now, but watch me two years from now. And even if I'm not blessed financially, as long as I will make heaven on earth for your daughter, respect that. I think parents should judge normal. And um, in other cultures, Lobola cannot be finished. <laughs> in other cultures, you keep paying and paying. But me as a minister, I finished it because I wanted to be an example. I didn't believe that you should be running away from Tezwara and you see him saying, when you see him saying, you should pay as a brother, pay and finish. And even show appreciation by giving another extra cow if you can. Yes, let me run away from that one and throw it back to talk. Oh, ah, no, this is while, so while, wonderful. While you're on that, uh, I also want to say that I also finished a uh, rev. I also finished up um, level. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, I, I hope my in-laws are not listening. I'm also thinking of a Thanksgiving. <laughs> Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, so me, I'm not yet through. I'm still to uh, finish my, <laughs> my obligation. Now, uh, <laughs> oh, but this is so interesting, this is so nice. Now, coming to the issue of uh, uh, responsibility, of course, we are speaking about, we are talking about uh, uh, Alobola. Now the people are in uh, the house, they are, are married now. We want to talk of uh, the issue of uh, responsibility here. Uh, of course, we know that marriage is a responsibility, including finances. Now, what do you advise the youth who are preparing for courtship and marriage, uh, especially in uh, the issues in and around uh, finances? Uh, how can they be responsible in their finances? Over to you, uh, Pastor. Marriage is a responsibility, as we are saying, and if you are irresponsible, you'll be responsible for whatever happens from irresponsibility. So when it comes to uh, marriage, it's an amalgamation of all directions of life. The two are joined together. It means their finances are joined together. Their secrets, their passwords are all joined together. And now, one thing that we had overlooked in past years that we are learning is the premarital counseling. It's how vital it is. Marriage people, they, we usually want to, to, to stop a fire that is burning instead of fighting fire by checking our plugs in the home that can cause a fire. A preventing fire is the best technique of firefighting. So let our people be empowered with this knowledge so that we don't go with ambulances after honeymoon to say, ah, this issue has started. When we knew that the issue will start, we must immunize them against these polios and diphtherias and uh, uh, hepatitis uh, that will come in their marriage. So when they are planning, there is this urge to please. When the boy has gotten a girl, he sometimes becomes unreal trying to please the girl. And I did an animation about the expensive weddings, which I quickly said that there's nothing wrong with an expensive wedding because it's once in a lifetime. But what I hate to see is for a boy to borrow money, uh, to go to the banks and get money for an expensive wedding. And then after, uh, when the wedding is ending, they don't know where to go for honeymoon. 
or we visit them in their home, they are seated on paintings, on paintings that there are no sofas because the money, they are already starting a marriage by owing deco companies. They are owing many companies. Those people were unadvised. It's better to do what you can. And sometimes it's not easy because there is pressure from friends and pressure from, you remember backgrounds differ. If the girl's background may be rich than the boy or vice versa. So when I don't afford as a civil servant, and let's say I don't afford, when I'm saying as a civil servant is an example, let not people live here saying I'm a civil servant. I am a civil servant, but I'm also a businessman, right? I'm just giving an example, right? When I don't afford an expensive wedding, I, I think the parents of the girl also must understand that is for the good cause. Yet I should not pull them totally to my side. We should meet somewhere in between. Now, when it comes to planning and uh, this premarital counseling and planning, in culture, they teach the woman in culture how she should, what she shall meet in marriage. And they teach the men. They have advisors who advise the men. But when we came to the message, we thought, we thought well, they, they know the courts, they know the books, and we left a gap. I believe in the message also, like an heir who is under two dozen governors, there must be a team that teaches this boy how to treat the girl, what to expect, and not only on finances. Many times we think the girl must be taught when the boy is not taught. The boy expects the girl to be hunting for the success of the boy. <laughs> the, 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 the boy is expecting the girl to be, to be the slave of the family. They must be teaching, but back to finances now, if they can't manage money, they are going to have disputes in their marriage because financial disputes at one time was number three in marriage disputes. Uh, when I say financial disputes, I mean disputes about money or about not having money. It can be about money or about not having money <laughs> because money is a problem in how to use it or how to get it. <laughs> that can be either way. I did an unmeshing again on handling finances in marriage. Maybe, um, do I have that one? Handling finances in marriage. Do I have it there? I could play three minutes of that one. Uh, all right. I will, I will give it another time because I think it will save time when we, I'll, I'll play another different one later. But when I say handling, let me just say, well, to the married people, I tell them that according to the Bible, there is no longer something called mine or yours. It's now ours. Actually, my wife knows my passwords knows my eco cash numbers, knows everything. Because imagine if you hide passwords and monies, that there is money in such, such a place, hide it from your wife. And then you happen to faint and you need to be admitted and no one knows where the money is. <laughs> you happen to just fall down and you collapse with your pin codes and the wife doesn't know the pin codes and there is no money to take you to hospital because she doesn't know where the money is. You are the only, the collapsed one is the one who has the secrets. That is a problem. So we need to share that. But now knowing the dynamics of all other marriages that have been seven years and above, you, your first unity must be in all directions. I cannot just teach financial unity when you have no unity in all other areas. Because if you are not trusting one another, you won't trust one another financially. The marriage principles must apply holistically. Not that I preach financial unity as a separate thing. When you have no unity in other, in agreeing together in other things. I, if I say the man must not hide anything from the wife, I'm not saying the wife shall hide something from the man. It should be throughout the whole system of marriage, the principles of marriage as financial or all other principles run together in parallel. Over to you, Doc. 
God bless you so much. This is so uh, wonderful. I think I will repeat the issue of money uh, when I'm done with this one. Now, uh, I'm still at uh, the, uh, the issue of courtship and stuff. Now, at what stage can one be deemed ready to get uh, married? What are the minimum requirements for marriage? Uh, uh, you know, we've got youth who are listening now. Someone is scratching his head, he wants to marry. So, Pastor, do you have the minimum requirements uh, for that brother who wants to get married? Over to you, Pastor. Yes. Uh, the minimum requirement is the maximum baptism of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> because a man without God cannot be able to treat another person well. Imagine if you as a person are struggling with the temper alone and someone comes in the crossfire of your weakness of temper, that temper becomes gender-based violence because you yourself have a nature you have not yet overcome and you are bringing another person into the crossfire of natures. Now, when it comes to readiness to marry, uh, when God says it is not good for men to be alone, that man was in the presence of God. That man was busy tilling the ground. It's not a man who is doing nothing and is saying, ah, since I have nothing to do, let me do women. <laughs> no, it's someone who is in the presence of God. And a man who is not in the presence of God, it is good for that man to be alone. <laughs> until he gets the power of God for him to be able to handle another person. If you can't handle yourself, you cannot handle another person. So the requirements are, they are there's requirements in terms of age. Those who are under 18, if you happen to hack into this, um, hacken also, that is not time yet. I don't understand why a boy in Form 2 should be talking about a girlfriend when the socks is he's wearing are bought by the father, the toothpaste he's using is bought by the father. What is he offering to the girl? Um, now, when it comes to being ready and mature, maturity is not age determined. Maturity is a state of the heart. A boy who is not yet mature, even if he has move on, let him be mature. <laughs> now, but I get worried when boys take long to marry. When they get, uh, I think uh, the prophet says marry young. I have many quotes on that. He says marry young. Uh, it doesn't mean also to jump on things because there's a court. When you are young and you are mature, you should be able to marry. So requirements, your age should be okay. I think boys at 22, 23 or above, in our, I'm a marriage officer. In our country, as long as you are above 18, you can marry. But there has to be all other factors also. You must also be financially ready. We know Christ says, I go and prepare a place and I'll come to receive you. Christ does not come to take a bride. Then he says, nah, oh, okay, okay, where do we place this bride? You want to prepare a place. Then he comes to receive the bride. I don't understand if the brother just says, ah, now I have this girl, so my father, do you have a place for me? One, you are against scripture. If you go with the woman to your father's house, the Bible says for this cause, men shall leave father and mother. If, as long as you are staying with father and mother, you, that is not a place to bring the wife, according to scripture. Uh, of course, I'm not saying run to your in-laws also to stay with the father, of the girl. Although there is no scripture against that, there is no scripture that says a woman shall leave father and mother. But there is all logic. <laughs> that headship has changed. You, if the headship has changed. You are now the head of the woman, but now you are under the head also when you are staying with the in-laws. I understand that circumstances can force you but don't allow circumstances to make you unscriptural. If you go against scripture, there'll be a whirlwind that will, things will always break. You go and stay with your parents, 
you will cause your partner to hate your parents because there'll be friction. There are two queens in one territory. You go and stay with the in-laws, there'll be two bulls in one territory. You are causing unnecessary friction. So you must be ready financially, you must be ready spiritually, you must be ready even mature in the body. I know many people are mature in the body, they are ready. But as you are mature in the body, the brothers who are 30 years and above and they are not thinking about marriage, I'm not judging them, but I'm worried because I believe hormones besides scriptures, besides scriptures, hormones themselves should be working hard on you. Besides my words and encouragement, there are hormones in a man that tell him time is ticking. And then there are scriptures that help along with those hormones. That's why Paul had to account for those hormones and say, if you are burning, hormones can burn. <laughs> if you are burning, marry. <laughs> but anyway, if you marry because of lust, that marriage won't last. <laughs> because you will start lasting after marriage also. Because marriage cannot quench last. If you are lasting, remember, if you are choosing a cell phone and you see a better one, you can upgrade. If you are choosing a car and you see a better one, you can upgrade. But if you are choosing a wife and see a better one, <laughs> upgrade your revelation. <laughs> Uh, you stay with that woman till death. Adam was adamant. He, had to, he did not leave the woman. He says, and he had to say, I'll be with Eve until I say, Eve, mu, Eve. <laughs> God bless you. Back to you, Doc. Oh, uh, this is so interesting, Pastor. Uh, may the Lord richly bless you. Now you <laughs> I highlighted the issue of uh, maturity, uh, uh, the Holy Ghost, uh, and you must be financially ready. So we have got brothers who are still studying. Someone is studying at the university, but uh, God opened uh, an opportunity for him. Uh, do you, uh, but that, that brother is financially ready. So someone, in that condition, he might be listening uh, tonight. What advice can you give that brother? Okay. As the brother is starting, and then remember, as you can study as you are growing, you can study as you are marrying. What is bad? The course that I have are against a high school girl or a secondary school girl just becoming excited about marriage and the parents are busy taking the girl to school and the, uh, the parents are paying school fees for the girl. Even, right, I will also preach on to the university side. Remember when a girl is in university, she can marry even when she's in university and continue with their course because this is adult learning. So, but what you need to understand there is the dynamics that this brother, I'm going to come back to the brother, but when a brother approaches a sister who is in college, she must also take responsibility. If my daughter is in part of doing medicine and surgery or engineering, and this brother comes to engineer something about love there, and he says, now this woman must be married. I don't want to hear, although headship has changed, I understand. I wouldn't like to hear that when she's now in part two, the brother says, look, um, there is no, um, we don't have funds anymore, but love is now bigger. So the girl drops out from school and then the brother starts bringing quotations to say, okay, what do you want school for? Because anyway, you are going to sit at home. <laughs> I'm the sole provider and we have enough money. There is nothing wrong about my daughter hitting her ambitions and learning and getting a degree and then agreeing with the husband to sit at home if she has to sit at home for marriage to be uh, scriptomessagically uh, well climate. But if she has to work and support the men, also good. But what I'm saying is, if marriage has to be during schoolwork, it should be well calculated. 
I would support a brother who marries even when they are at school. Because I think, Doc, you know that trying to do it when you are now a married man is not easy. This year, I was trying to enroll for another. You know, learning does not end. And we encourage brothers to break records in anything that makes an impact in this life. So I was, I'm trying to enroll for a certain course, but if it takes me to America to learn, it's no longer easily possible now than if I did it when I was a young boy. Because I have daughters, I have a, it's no longer easy for the marriage setup. So when the brother is financially ready and they are learning, they are starting the books and another book is opening of the, this woman that is appearing, you find that two is better than one. They encourage one another and it can work in good harmony. Over to you, Doc. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. God bless you so much. Um, let me uh, quickly move to this one. Uh, we've been talking about uh, courtship, but now we want to emphasize those who are in marriage, the couples, in marriage life. So the, the first one, of course, how can couples uh, keep the fire burning to keep that honeymoon feeling forever and ever? Over to you, Pat. Yes, it's a good question. Um, when I'm answering about keeping the fire burning, I'm assuming that the fire is there at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> all right because the priests were told that the fire must burn continually it must not be off so there must be a fireplace in the home <laughs> the prophet gives us that never let that honeymoon feeling end so there are other things that quench the fire those things must be removed unresolved conflicts they quench that fire and attitudes against each other, they quench the fire. No, attitude is a very evil thing in that a bad attitude is so evil that when people are on fire in love, the two people who love one another, one speaks something good, then because of attitude, it spins in the air and gets to the ear of somebody as something bad. Something has been said nicely as a good statement, but bad attitude spins it in the air and it goes to the ear of another person as something wrong. So to keep the fire burning, you know, our fire as Christians is not from websites. Our fire as Christian is from the Bible. We are motivated when we see Isaac and Rebecca playing sport, and we know that, oh, there is romance in marriage. <laughs> and the source is a heavenly source. Because the prophet says, I don't believe in filthy living among Pentecostals. So believers are not supposed to go and take polluted materials to bring, to bring fire in the marriage. They are not going to visit uh, romance sites when there is enough romance in Genesis there. <laughs> when um, they are making sport and you see that, no, uh, something was happening. Things were firing in the marriage. So to keep the fire burning, I believe that a couple that prays together will stand together against all odds, against all opposition. But if you are going to allow unresolved conflicts and a bad atmosphere to be in the marriage, you see, those are viruses that destroy the marriage. Right now we have this virus called COVID-19. It's so evil because it's a 2019 thing that is affecting us in 2020. So there are 2019 issues that are fighting marriages in 2020. And uh, marriages that are living in 2019 have a, a marital COVID-19 in that they are bringing unresolved effect, uh, conflicts of 2019. So to keep the fire burning, it is said, brother, that uh, some of the things that are needed on marriage, are from people who are good advisors. You won't read in the scripture um, an analysis of, about woman's needs or about men's needs. But God has put men who are wise 
to take with all holiness helpful components that can help people along marriage. To keep the fire burning, no one must be short of their needs. Every need that a man has, he must get them within that marriage with no sanctions and things. And the woman, all her needs, she must get them within that marriage. Just to stretch uh, over the question, even outside these boundaries, I would say, just because I've mentioned the needs of a man and the needs of a woman. The needs of a woman are summarized in three A's, which is attention, uh, uh, um, affinity, and appreciation. A woman wants appreciation. If you don't tell her that she's beautiful, someone will tell her at work. <laughs> um, she needs attention. That's why you must always communicate. Those three A's will tell you, will cover all the needs of the woman. She wants to be loved. She wants you to say, you don't say, ah, but I bought you a dress, but I bought you two cars, but I bought you a house. She wants you to say that you, 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 you love her. Then the needs of a man are summarized in four S's. Uh, I know you run to, people will easily run to the other S, so I, will, I omit that one because people have already run there. So four letter S for the needs of a man. <laughs> one S is submission. So you missed it. Some of the people, you missed it. Submission. Submission is not submission where you, you are no longer thinking or what, but it's a mutual coexisting with recognizing headship. So one need of a man is submission. The other one is support. If the woman does not support the man, no matter how you cook, uh, she needs, he needs support. The other S is success. Man is made to be a, a provider. Man is the breadwinner. A, and a husband is not housebound. <laughs> he is made to be a, a winner, to bring things to the home. So if a man is not successful, he's a frustrated man. Uh, although success is subjective, someone may be successful to have married that man, that's all, that, that woman, that's all. He may feel that I'm successful enough to have married that person. So the other S, since people have thought of it, I won't say it. <laughs> well, so when I was saying that every need must be met in that family, without things from outside. It means you must understand one another's needs and supply them. Sometimes we as men, um, I was laughing with the Rev, uh, Brother Fred there, when I was carrying flowers at one time, you know, coming home, I was carrying flowers. You know, with, with me, flowers don't mean much. <laughs> Only that now they mean a lot because I noticed my wife likes them. So now flowers now have a meaning. It doesn't mean a copy and paste. Someone's wife may not like flowers, may like chocolates, so bring chocolates. And it depends on the person you, you married. Someone was joking, saying, if you married someone who likes rural things, bring those fruits, boons, um, and those things. She will appreciate those things more than flowers. <laughs> so it's all about understanding and knowing what she needs. Um, I think it's freezing this side. Am I OK? Yeah. All right. I'm not seeing them there. All right. So it's about knowing. Uh, over to you, Doc, so that I don't divert and digress. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Ah, uh, no, this is so nice. This is so nice, Pastor. Ah, uh, no. Now, uh, I heard, uh, of course, you, you, you touched on this uh, question, uh, especially on the issue of uh, uh, management of money. But I know you, you can as well give us uh, an advice on that. Uh, what advice can you give to couples to manage the issue of money? Who should do what? What are the responsibilities of a man? What are the responsibilities of a uh, the wife in the home? Maybe you can touch a little bit on that before I move on to another issue. Over to you, Pastor. 
Yes, on managing money, um, and managing resources. Uh, because God cannot give you what you cannot manage. So we must learn to manage money, uh, work budget together, and set priorities together. Just maybe to express much, let me play a few minutes of my animation on managing money. And um, that may answer a lot of things. We'll just take a moment. friends. Our subject today is handling finances in a Christian marriage. Finances are a hot topic in most marriages and money fights are one of the most leading causes of divorce. Not being on the same page about finances can drive couples apart. All married couples have the potential to a healthy and intimate financial relationship. Money talk Discussing and budgeting together can improve your financial intimacy. In one study, money issues were found responsible for 22% of all divorces, making it the third leading cause. Some analysts say Bible mentions money matters approximately 2,350 times. Now, before we even discuss how to have financial harmony in your marriage. Let me quickly advise you to keep God in the center of your marriage and establish a Christ-centered marriage, not a money-centered marriage. Though you must work hard to attain your financial goal, bankruptcy must never lead to love raps. Many couples ask me, what is the best crypto-economic way of running marriage finances? Bearing in mind the different economic setup, different backgrounds, different marriage dynamics and family structures, should they all have one joint account and run it together? Or have separate accounts then centrally contribute to expenses and to joint savings account? Each marriage has unique circumstances and it's hard to have a one-size-fits-all copy and paste type of advice. Yet I will do the best to bring out certain all-rounder time-tested scriptural principles that apply in all aspects of Christian marriage. As someone stated, marriage is an amalgamation of all pieces of life. The husband and the wife lose their individual identity and become one. I is dropped and replaced by we. The marriage couple no longer uses my, but our. This includes finances for marriage to thrive. There must be intimacy at all levels. Teamwork is the best approach. Budget together and avoid spending in secret. Concealing debts, lying about income, hiding accounts and credit cards. A joint account gives you best sense of unity and transparency. Yet it's not always possible in some marriage setups. Whether you are running joint accounts or multiple accounts, hide nothing from one another. Keeping money secrets from your partner is called financial infidelity and experts say it can cause just as much harm in a marriage as cheating on your spouse. When lies about money come to light, they can cause arguments and loss of trust. In some cases, financial infidelity and sexual infidelity go hand in hand as cheating spouses hide all evidence of financial expenditure on extramarital affairs. Does the income profile of the family affect the budget? Since we usually see the money earner trying to detect the spending priorities. Income inequalities must never disturb the sweet harmony and one-mindedness in family budget. If one partner is the income in, he earns it for the marriage, not for himself or herself. It is important to respect the unique contribution of your spouse to the home. The original old-time Bible setup 
gives the man the role of a provider or income generator with a stay-at-home wife with more household or child-bearing responsibilities. The family income trends have changed significantly in modern times. We now have more women working and the dual income scenario is increasingly becoming more common for the woman to be the main or sole breadwinner and the husband unfavorably reduced by circumstances to a housebound Mr. Mom keeping children at home as the wife leads the hunt for finances. I always challenge husbands to rise, work hard, pray and even upgrade their education and direct the financial direction of the family. Yet to balance this, we understand that it is possible for the woman to be more learned and more positioned for a high paying job than the man and even have high entrepreneurship skills as depicted in Proverbs 31 about the vicious woman. The bottom line is work as a team with one mind, even in one income families. If I may use football analogy, one spouse becomes the striker looking for the financial goals and the other becomes the goalkeeper and the keeper of the home. Please give us practical hints on how to practically budget together when we have different priorities and temperaments. It is important to discuss finances together, share goals and targets together, pray for guidance and wisdom, invite God into your finances. If the husband and wife have separate goals, it makes it nearly impossible to have financial intimacy in marriage. Matthew 12, verse 25. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. It is also important to have an understanding of how your spouse used money and how they were raised around money. What is your spouse's greatest fear with their fire? Right. I noticed that the, the animation is quite good, long, so it may not finish now, but um, let me go back to you, uh, Doc, as we continue. When I was talking about love, um, I noted that sometimes we love our wives and they love us, but you may love somebody and maybe have done all what you think proves love to her, but you also need to know how she wants to be loved because you may love her tangent from the way she wants to be loved. So we need to also know how they want us to express love to them. All right, Doc, back to you. Wonderful. Yo, ah, that pastor was in the, uh, in the boat. <laughs> yeah. Yo was, I uh, know. By the no, no. <laughs> Yo. Financial intimacy, financial harmony. You replace I by we, teamwork, concealing debt, financial infidelity. Yo, uh, that pastor was serious. <laughs> uh, I was serious. Now, let me move on. Now, we know that uh, in uh, the African culture, we, we do have uh, the issue of extended family. Uh, and, and this issue is very, very critical to uh, have dog. Now, being Africans, we have extended family responsibilities. How can believers manage financial assistance to parents and in-laws? Over to you, dog. Yes, as believers, there is a scripture which says, whosoever does not provide, provide for his family, especially his own household, is worse than an infidel. He has denied the faith. So when the scripture is saying that whosoever does not provide for his household or his family, especially those of his household, is also saying family is extended family. Then especially household is now zooming to the immediate family. So charity begins at home. You must provide for your family. 
And then the Bible also says for your, for your extended family, if there is an extended family, there must be an extended hand somehow. So in-laws are not outlaws. They must be treated nicely. And in the message, our in-laws are in graces because we are in the grace of God. So there must be a balance in the treatment of in-laws. Otherwise, if it's not balanced, um, you will find that the marriage tilts also. Remember that no matter how we try to balance the treatment of in-laws or financial contributions, it's according to mutual agreement and needs. Remember, our parents have different backgrounds. One can be a rich family, the other one can be poor. So it goes without saying that the poor side of parents will definitely need more help under mutual agreement than the rich ones. Yet it doesn't mean that you, you, you should not, you, if you are well disciplined, even if the, the parents are richer than you, you must visit them with groceries even every month because it's not like taking calls to, 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 to Wange. <laughs> but you are actually showing how well taught you are. You give because you are expressing your heart. Now, when it comes to the extended families, I want the wives and the husbands to understand that families, there is no two sides of families. There is one family. There is no two sides about it. When you are now married, the whole family is now married. Now imagine when we get to heaven, uh, angels are there. They have been with God before Christ is married. He has been living with angels. So when we get to, to heaven, we won't tell Christ that ah, now I think these angels have had their time. We, you are now a married man, Christ. Let the angels vanish to the earth somewhere and we enjoy here. In heaven as the bride, we're going to live with angels. <laughs> we're going to enjoy, that is the extended family. We're going to even have the 144,000 as the extended family, and we're going to enjoy. So I want you to notice also that there are circumstances, partly cultural and partly reality, wherein if I'm the last born in my family, last boy, I carry certain responsibilities by culture. You may find me helping my siblings to get somewhere, that's culture. And it's, if it's not at friction with the word, it's all right. So when I get married, I think my, my wife should understand that, <laughs> although it should be not straining the marriage. You just say it nicely, you don't steal money and support your siblings. And then she steals and support. No, you should be clear about it and be open to the family where you cannot, because you can easily be open to the extended family that ah, now we are strained, now we have limited resources. Then the family understands because the relationship between the marriage and the extended family is not one-sided. It can be the extended family also asked to understand the marriage, as the marriage is also asked to understand the extended family. Remember when Christ is at the cross, Christ is dying for us. He says, woman, son, behold your mother. From that time, John, you had to take responsibility of staying with Mary. There, I don't know if the wife was really consulted, but I think the wife was a good believer to be able to, to take that new twist of events. As long as it is negotiated, you can stay with the uh, side of your uh, your wife or she can stay with your side as long as those people are well taught not to be spies in the marriage and also not to mistreat the wife. She's the queen. She, she's the running the affairs. There should be no threatening presence of Nguenya in our marriage. But also there should be no threatening absence of Nguenya in our marriage. <laughs> so their presence must be moderated and their absence
can also be bad. So it's all moderation. Over to you, Doc. This is so clear. This is very clear. I think uh, people are agreeing with me. Even Pastor Chireka, you agree with me. The pastor is uh, bringing these things very, very clear. So I, uh, of course, especially because I wanted to ask you the issue of 50-50. Now you have already answered that there are no two sides. We've got one family. So uh, God bless you so much. Now I've got another, another question. Uh, I listened to one of your animations when you were talking about the impact of bad breath in marriage. So I've got a, uh, this question here. It says, does cleanliness uh, in the place uh, whether the, the, where the couples are staying, uh, either on their body naturally, can it play a part in marriage? Then how can one let, uh, one let a partner know, know about it without messing up marriage? Over to you, Pat. <laughs> nice one there. Yeah, cleanliness, uh, it is said to be next to godliness. And um, uncleanliness certainly is a very repulsive something. And um, cleanliness definitely plays a part in marriage. In that, as you said about bad breath, bad breath can be a passion killer. Um, if someone is approaching with a very sweet heart and a smelling mouth, uh, only these days when we have masks, we can manage some things. <laughs> but remember, very soon we'll be removing masks. <laughs> but anyway, some of those things are easily correctable. Uh, when we were boys, we never knew that our armpits can smell until someone entered the, our lives. Then we now know that there's something called roll on and, you know, it makes things marriage roll, roll on and move on. <laughs> so uh, we should not have unnecessary patterns in marriage. <laughs> Our bodies are dying bodies, so they do smell. Even if we are beautiful and handsome, we still need a good relationship with soap and water. <laughs> right. So when, I, when we say cleanliness and marriage, sometimes we as men, yet a wrong conception of marriage. A woman is not coming there to pick your socks. The gray one is over there. The other one is in the sink. <laughs> the woman must, uh, must come to support your vision. But if, we, if, the, if there's a washing basket <laughs> in the house and I come, right now I'm so tired, I'm from the surgery and I'm from preaching. If I come home, and I'm seeing the washing basket, and I just throw the, the socks everywhere, and I, my shoes are all over the place. The woman will just sing the song, um, um, must Jesus bear the cross, and she will pick the socks to the washing basket. But why is she suffering when I have hands? Even if I'm tired, I think it's fair enough to just, there's a washing basket there. I just put the, I know brothers have done well in knowing the bread basket, putting things in the bread basket, but I want brothers to know that there's a washing basket also. You don't throw your shirt all over the place. It's easier for your wife to see how organized you are when you just put the shirt in the washing basket and then there's order, you don't lose much time. And I've often been talking about brothers who lose a lot of their time in life because of not being organized. Yeah. Right. Remember, if you are not organized as a brother and you are going to spend 30 minutes a day looking for your socks, <laughs> looking for your socks under the bed and so forth, it means in two days, you have spent one hour. And in two months, you have lost more than a day looking for socks. And that man, he has lost a day not playing with the children, not taking a wife out, but he has lost a day in two months looking for success because of the amount of time. Remember, if you don't manage money, if you don't manage time also, because we usually talk about money management in marriage. 
But the first thing that is available to poor couple and rich couple is time. If as busy as I am now, if I'm coming from online now, when I get on the ground at home, I must compensate for my absence. One day is enough for me to be a good husband, to be a good pastor, to be a good father, to be a good son, to be a good neighbor, to be a good uh, friend. So when I get home after the, the surgery, after the, the farm, after the, the online meetings, I'm now on the ground. There's nothing like I'm tired. Uh, that marriage that has a tired husband who comes tired every day, uh, soon he will have a retired husband. <laughs> So you must be able to manage time and being clean also manages time. If you are organized and you know where your pen, where your car keys are, uh, if you are going to put your car keys where you are going to look for them for the next 30 minutes, you are going to be always late at work and you are going to, to always lose time in marriage because every day you, are, you have time that is allocated to looking for car keys. <laughs> that is, we need to manage time in marriage. When I say manage time, even if you have no money, you can take a walk with your wife. It means a lot. It means a lot. Even if you are good with your children, you also need quality time without children, without your cell phone, just two of you, just working together in life. I believe that sometimes some of those who cannot manage their cell phone that is stealing time from marriage they should have a tray when they enter the bedroom where they leave the cell phones and enter the bedroom so that the bedroom does not become a boardroom where there is bottom and issues much room and they have no much room for love <laughs> over to you doc <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, God bless you so much. Uh, Pastor Chereka, you, you've got some comments, I know. <laughs> you get comments. No, I am enjoying myself, uh, uh, Brother David. I am really enjoying myself. I will just start from uh, the last uh, thing that uh, the pastor was uh, talking about. You know, it's uh, very, very important. Uh, I, I know that uh, uh, we brothers, we are normally the guilty ones. And uh, since we're having a hard talk here, you know, we know when we were at high school, you know, primary school, uh, it's usually boys that uh, run away from uh, bathing. Please, brothers, as you are hearing from there, uh, you know, uh, it, it, it doesn't have to start when you are married, before you are married, when you are mature. I think that's one of the, the responsibilities. You just need to take care of yourself. Uh, I think God expects us to do that, you know, uh, brush our teeth, uh, 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 you know, bath at least twice or three times a day. Uh, that is very important. And it's not a sin to put a, a roll on and, uh, you know, those uh, things that make you smell nicer. You know, it's not a, it's not a crime. And it's um, the same thing also, uh, uh, sisters also, uh, must understand that uh, the brothers, uh, you know, uh, it's both way, not just sisters or brothers. You know, when you go out there, you are going to meet up with uh, all kinds of people. Uh, others, they uh, they actually dress and, uh, you know, uh, bath and present themselves to, 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 to entice others. So it should be that when a man or when a woman comes back to their husband, they find them in a very admirable, you know, in a very lovely way. I really appreciate that. And I was writing notes here. I appreciate those three A's uh, uh, for the female side and uh, those uh, four S's uh, that the pastor did uh, speak about. I also want to add there to say communication is very important. You know, uh, uh, even with my wife here, this is a hard talk. I can share about it. You know, with my wife, we have a time where we have, uh, you know, hard talks with each other. Time for communication. Uh, you know, we start with uh, what I'm doing that is pleasing her. And I start with what she's doing, which is uh, uh, pleasing to me. And we also go into the uncomfortable parts. What is it that she must improve? And what is it that I must improve? And I tell you, after those hard talks, you might be pinched a little bit. You might, you might be cut a little bit, but you come out uh, there much better. And you start to understand, oh, she loves flowers. 
She loves those compliments. She loves the chocolate. Brother David, let me stop it there. Uh, we still have a couple of few minutes just to squeeze in a, a few things. We did uh, uh, lose some 15, 20 minutes at the start. So let me hand over back to you. But I'm enjoying myself here. Wonderful, wonderful. Ah, no, may God bless you so much. Now we've got, uh, of course, as we are preparing to close, we've got quite a number of questions that uh, came uh, as uh, improved questions so that uh, we can give a time to the pastor just to answer them. Now, uh, I will <laughs> give you these questions, pastor. Uh, now, the first one uh, is, uh, would uh, a spiritual brother with uh, godly character we know some brothers have got good, good character. They are always there at church. Uh, every service, they are there. Uh, who is committed to the things of the Lord? Be denied marriage on the basis of him, not so stable financially. So some people are bringing this question. So pastor, you can respond to them uh, as we are preparing to uh, close the session. Over to you, pastor. Yes, yes. Um, as I'm about to take that question, let me just also comment on what Reverend Fred there was saying. Uh, communication is vital. Yes, he said it very nicely there. And communication is not backing instructions. <laughs> it's when we are mutually communicating and we must be always connected to our homes. Even when I'm at work, I should be able to send a WhatsApp message. Because remember, when you are at work and you are saying you are busy, your wife sees that you are online, but she has received nothing. <laughs> um, uh, we understand the, the, our differences, and it's good to allow each other to vent. If you prevent it, there's going to be a vent that will open by pressure. <laughs> So allow, many women find it therapeutic to talk. <laughs> so when you come and you are seated on the bed and they say, hey brother, that issue, don't say, uh, uh, let's see it another time. Because when the brothers say, let's see it another time, they say, never, they are not going to talk about it, it's over. You know, the language of men, when they say, oh, uh, all right, um, next time, <laughs> they just mean that, oh, oh, let it end. But when you allow your wife to vent, the, those unresolved conflicts, they, they, it's like an abscess, it, it bursts. And then it brings the, one of the most important things of marriage, which is forgiveness. That will make you never go around in whirlpools, courting issues of last year, because you've communicated. Now coming to this spiritual brother, I love spiritual brothers and um, marriage is a natural side and the spiritual side. Father Babes was saying that when he was teaching us on marriage, he was saying, sister, brother, if you marry this sister because she's singing at church, that is a nice spiritual thing. But remember, at home, they, we won't always sing. There. <laughs> and if you marry this brother because he's a preacher and he's casting out devils, remember, at home, you are not always going to be casting out devils. It's going to be love and love and love and real issues coming up together. So when the question comes that can the brother, spiritual brother be denied uh, marriage because he has no finances? Now, the, the answer can be yes and no, depending on who is denying this person. It's not known who is this person who is denying this good brother of ours, this spiritual brother here. Is the girl denying? Is the father in not denying? Is the pastor denying? Or all of them are in denial? <laughs> well, or the situation is denying the brother. <laughs> because sometimes the situation itself may deny the brother after everyone has accepted the brother, but the situation just denies him. Well, the prophet says, I will work until my hands bleed. When he had nothing, he proved that I will work until my hands bleed. What is unacceptable is this spiritual brother of ours, this one, who is, he has no finances and is also lazy. That is a bad combination. If he has no finances and is also lazy, ah, brother, I, 
though I don't have a scripture to deny that brother, but <laughs> I can secretly keep hands for those who are denying him. Because this brother here is, he causes the message to be scorned. If the brother can work until his hand splits and there's nothing, there's a future there, there's a future. But if the brother is just sleeping and saying, uh, why are they denying me? There's a problem. And, uh, but anyway, marriage is not on grounds of finances, although finances are one of the pillars. So I know testimonies of people who are married from, who married from rich families when they are poor. They are just rich in ambition and it happens to go well with them. So on that one, there is no one who denies scripturally, but we only need to rebuke that brother. We don't need to deny this brother as much, but he needs sharp rebuke. Yes. God bless you so much. Now I've got only two short questions. Then if we uh, get those ones, then we can um, uh, close. Now, the, this one, it says, how can young brothers, uh, both uh, brothers, brothers and sisters, get to know each other in a godly way? Over to you, Pam. I assume that these are people who are trying to be married, who are trying to marry, <laughs> but otherwise, knowing that that one is a sister, that one is a brother, uh, in a courtly way is by fellowship. But if it is to the extent of graduation to marriage, yeah, that is a good question because we don't want artificial courtships and it's good to marry a friend, to marry someone that you, you know, you should not just come from without friendship. You just say, brother, a uh, pastor, that sister with a, a yellow dress, that's the sister I want. You don't even know the name of the sister. You don't even know what she likes or what she doesn't like. You just know her as a sister with a yellow dress. When you approach the pastor, you say the brother with a blue trouser. <laughs> but within confines of holiness, when you draw boundaries, I know these days technology has made things so easy and so complicated at the same time. Right now, we are against online dating because of the dangers of online dating. But as we are preaching and praying for people to be married, Zoom is online. A brother can Zoom on a sister as we are on Zoom. <laughs> and things start happening, actually. As much as we can meet here on Facebook, on YouTube, or whatever, let it be within godly parameters and never commit yourself to somebody that you have not met in real life. Lest you start preparing your lobola things and then one day you meet the person in real life and you think they are related to that one <laughs> when it's actually the very person in real life. So we have youth programs that allow uh, interactions and it is, I've, I've seen that this question is so vital in that at one time I was taking analysis of people who are married in our church. You find this one is playing in the brass band. This one is the one who is singing specials. And another sister is complaining in church because one, she's always late and she sits far and she's the first to leave without saying, God bless you. No one knows her and she's still unmarried. I'm not saying she should act up, but I'm saying, I've observed such things, <laughs> right? <laughs> so they should within, right now there are WhatsApp groups of youths. It's good because it keeps them minded on the message, but there must be red lines that are drawn in those groups. Because in those WhatsApp groups, if you are going to be chatting up to 2 a.m., something is now becoming ungodly. Or if you are debating that is ungodly, it's unwise or it's unorderly. Because the Bible says, let everything be done decently and in order. Well, this is so true that most of the brothers 
you have an album of her sister of photos because every time she upgrades her profile, they are downloading. <laughs> so they have a full album of the sister. <laughs> I've seen it when brothers approach me. When I can't see the sister they are talking about, they inbox you the picture. You find that is the latest picture. So, but anyway, as long as technology is harnessed, not in a clumsy way, within the confines, as long as you are not going to put a flag, when we say let's know one another in a godly way, remember another brother will put a flag on a sister because you have interacted for two minutes, you are now jealous when another person is now interacting, you feel like he's interrupting. <laughs> Don't put a flag on somebody. That's why some people faint when courtships are announced. You see brothers losing the whole service because of a courtship that was announced. They are saying, ah, so he's gone. I thought he's mine. You can know one another healthily within the confines and never feel like you possess it if you have not gone to the pastors or to the parents. So within the godly parameters, let's interact as our youth. Let's study the word together and uh, you zoom on that person and you understand it closer. Because some people look beautiful away there, but in your score sheet, you know, brothers have a score sheet. They say the sister must be this, 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 this. And they forget that she has a score sheet also that the brother must be this, this, this. As you are marking your heart, is also marking your, your heart. And also, in closing this one, let me advise the brothers to accept if a sister says no, even if it looks like it's for no reason. Still love that sister and don't have a grudge that, why did she say no? Because other people, even when they are now married, they are still marking that sister that she said no for no reason. So, well, move on with life. If she's not the one, pray on, get the other one, and interact without getting into one another spirit. I was saying about getting into one another spirit that when you interact until your spirits are connected, that person can manipulate you and you choose them to be your wife when it was not your original intention. But because you've gotten into one another spirit and it's now infatuation, and you are manipulated, and you are married that person, and you wake up after marriage. Back to you, Doc. <laughs> ah, no, this is brilliant. May the Lord should bless you. So my last question, can courtship be reversed? So I think uh, these uh, follow-up questions are uh, people uh, <laughs> who want courtship. Now, can courtship be reversed? Uh, then we follow up at what, and at what stage is the marital journey irreversible? Over to you. What? Yeah. <clears throat> Courtship, <clears throat> you know, like the tabernacle of Moses, that at the outer court, holy place, and holiest of holies. The, the courtship is the outer court. <laughs> then engagement is the holy place. And then marriage wedding is the holiest of holies. So courtship is for you to find compatibility. Because remember, even if both of you have the Holy Spirit, you may still not be good partners in marriage. It doesn't mean everyone who has the Holy Spirit can be bride material to you. It can be bride of Christ, not your bride. So in that case, courtship, um, if it fails, it has not failed. Because the intention of courtship is to see how compatible you are. So if it happens to find that you are not compatible, courtship has been successful because it has answered the question that we're looking for. You are looking for answers, whether we are compatible or not. So if the answer that is no, we are not compatible, courtship has been successful in giving you the answer that you are not compatible, but marriage has not been successful. So 
at courtship level, it can be reversible. We don't encourage, uh, as much as it is not touch is a move, we don't encourage people who waste one another's time. You must pray, brother. And when you see courtship reversible, it means what you thought was a signal that this is the person is not, was not true. So you must also go and revise your spiritual signals before attempting another courtship. Because it's not that's where you leave arrows on everyone's heart until you find the one who will fall. <laughs> you should, um, courtship is not like fishing. Fishing, you just throw a hook and whatever bites, you pull it out. And when you see it's a, it's a carpenter fish, you don't tear the mouth and throw it back. No, don't damage another person's life. Courtship is hunting, you move with your arrow and you avoid shooting, seeing that this is not what I'm looking for. By the time you shoot, we think that you have known the reason that you are shooting for. That's why you need a game white and you need the pastor to tell you, to help you in some of these things. And anyway, when some of the reasons why courtship is reversed, it's because of private and confidential matters that the brother entered courtship without knowing them. Like for example, to be real, the brother is in courtship with his sister. Later they talk about their HIV status before engagement because the other part of the answer is that um, when you get to engagement, you have engaged in a gear that is not reversible. <laughs> you have already engaged a forward gear. You cannot engage backwards. It's now a forward ever. When you, have, when you are engaged, you have met a vow in engagement and the vow marries you. So your vow will marry you or it will devour you, right? So coming to the privacy issues, if information that you are not comfortable with comes up during courtship, it tests your spiritual fiber as a brother. If you loved this woman without knowing her HIV status, we will know whether that was love or it was just lust. <laughs> Although I understand the dynamics that parents also want to know that is, it's a confidentiality issue, but some parents want to say, ah, why is my son taking ARVs? Why is my, there are dynamics to these things. So other things may be fornication issues. You know, when you see a sister there, she's moving in church, she's caring, yeah, privacy, that you are not just going to prop it and throw it away. She's carrying the privacy of her past. She's carrying the privacy of her <coughs> HIV status. She's carrying the privacy of the abortions she did. So if you are going to probe that, uh, be prepared that if you have already determined that where you go, I will go. If my people be your people, be ready to meet the full package. <laughs> now, coming to that now, it makes it very crucial for us as pastors to referee the delivery of privacy matters. Many times when a boy and girl are deciding whether they are compatible in courtship, whether they can handle what they've heard, which is not just the nice face, when they are now being told from the heart what can be repulsive. I want to be there also so that I can say, now, brother, you have laughed the face, you have laughed the walk, you have laughed the hairstyle, you have laughed the person. Now, this is a full package. Now she's going to tell you something that before she says, you must vow that you will never tell another person. Because when the courtship ends, the close fr friend of this brother will say, why did you live here? The brother will say, don't tell anyone she's HIV positive. Don't tell anyone she... 
she has problems. She's wetting blankets now. <laughs> Don't tell anyone. Those are real issues, our oh, brothers. Your know, people, these are issues that should be handled. A sister who is spiritual can wet blankets at a marriage stage, and we, she can be taught how to go around those issues. It's just immature bladder when the brain is mature. Maybe, maybe she's mature for marriage, right? So when those uh, touch issues, when you are now breaking that egg of pro confidentiality, it must be under a privacy vow in the pastor's room there where the brother will vow that you will never spread that information. Sometimes that's why we end up thinking of not announcing courtship, but announcing a state of, a stage of engagement. Because imagine what it means. I come, this brother here is getting to courtship with this sister. The whole church, yeah, yeah, yeah. The church is now interested parties to know why if they did not proceed. But if I say I announce only engagement, at, at City Tape, we still announce courtships. I, we were announcing recently, but I'm thinking, you know, that we may soon be now announcing the irreversible part so that if my daughter has been in courtship, I'm a parent. And when the brother says, mm, what I've seen in her, I cannot move on. People start asking that maybe she fornicated. Maybe she has other things. We are putting the whole church into be interested parties when things are not yet confirmed. But at engagement, there is no reverse. And courtships must not be too artificial, no one another. If in courtship you have never seen him angry, uh, you don't know him. You must be able to see him angry and say, oh, this is, I think I can handle him when he's like this. But what, what if he, when he's angry, he kills somebody? <laughs> <laughs> and then you don't know that you only are killed in marriage and then you say, oh, that's how he gets angry. <laughs> you must know him fully in courtship. Well, it has been nice, brothers. Uh, we can go all night and all night. All that, <laughs> these are exciting matters. Back to you, Doc. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I really appreciate. This is so wonderful. Uh, I think uh, the people who are listening, they agree with me. Pastor Chileka there is nodding his head, agreeing with me. Doc, what you were explaining to us is so, so important. Uh, may the Lord richly bless you uh, for giving us your, your time. We know your schedule is very tight, but giving us your time to come and share uh, these important things with us, we really appreciate. I also want to say, greet the family and the church on our behalf. Now, I will give time to Pastor Chireka just to conclude the discussion. He will give you uh, your uh, last uh, chance just to share with you whatever comments you want to uh, give us and as well uh, bless us and bless the people who shall listen to this uh, discussion. Over to you, Pastor Chireka. Uh, God bless you, Brother David, uh, for uh, the good work. Uh, uh, oh, Dr. David, uh, for the good work that you are, you are doing. Um, uh, Reverend uh, Nguenya, Reverend Dr. Nguenya, thank you so much uh, for, uh, you know, accepting our invitation. Um, it's not for the first time and definitely it's not for the last time. Uh, we have learned, uh, even myself, I'm taking notes here. Uh, you know, learning a lot of uh, 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 things that, uh, you know, came out uh, of uh, this discussion. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a great privilege that uh, we also have a medical doctor being, uh, you know, a pastor and also being a marriage officer. So you have really uh, touched, uh, you know, things in a very balanced way. And I really appreciate uh, that. Now I can say, I understand uh, what uh, Brother Branham meant in the marriage vow, when he said uh, marriage is something that is to be entered in soberly and well advised. You know, uh, gathering all the things that uh, you were sharing with us here, 
you know, if uh, a courtship is conducted right with the, with the good counseling, with the good advice, with all the soberness, then it will avoid, uh, you know, marriages that fail. Uh, that will help a lot. And I really want to appreciate uh, you for coming and uh, sharing these deep things. Uh, this video will be, uh, you know, uh, uh, public. I know that also from your side. And let me also say this uh, to our believers uh, who are watching here and our friends. Uh, follow uh, Reverend uh, Doc Nguenya on uh, Spoken Word Tabernacle Blawayo. Uh, they have a YouTube page there. You, you, you know, even if you are uh, subscribed to ours or to your particular church, you are not uh, restricted from uh, subscribing to their, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, YouTube uh, page. Uh, they're also on uh, Facebook, um, uh, Spoken Word uh, Marriage Chats. You also get uh, a lot of these, uh, uh, you know, animations that are done there. Uh, the, the man of God is doing a great work, you know, in this area. God uses him in a special way. And all of us, you know, I am reading the comments. Uh, we all agree, you know, a good balance, you know, uh, staying in the way and advising us, you know, to enjoy marriages, to have, uh, you know, for those who are not married, uh, married uh, good courtships that lead to good marriages that will stand. Because if the courtship was, it was shaking, the marriage will also shake. If uh, things were not right in courtship, it's not gonna change overnight. You know, marriage is not a washing machine that you were, you were dirty in a courtship and then you are going to be fine in marriage. Things have to be sorted. You have to have the right foundation. So we really appreciate. Uh, uh, please subscribe to uh, 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 this uh, video is also on Spoken Word, uh, Tabernacle Blawayo. Please subscribe there, follow the, uh, the programs that the men of God will be running also on, uh, on Facebook for those that are there. Uh, if also you are also listening and you have not subscribed to ours also, it's not a crime also. You are not limited to the number of uh, uh, you know, YouTube uh, channels that you can follow. If you like what we're doing, subscribe, you'll be notified. If you have a service that is clashing, you can always watch it later. God richly bless you. Uh, Pastor, uh, Reverend Doc Nguenya, we're going to give you this opportunity. Uh, just maybe if there was something that uh, you, uh, you, you didn't uh, uh, say that was on your notes, you may uh, compress it and uh, as well as uh, praying for us and just uh, usher a blessing for those online and those who watch it uh, uh, after this. God bless you, Brother David, as we just uh, go straight uh, to our precious uh, Reverend Dr. Nobile Nguenya, all the way from Kwabulawa. Yes, Konto to their tongue. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, I've also learned a lot, Rev, and Doc, there. It's been good to be with you as Iron Sharpen It Iron. I've learned a lot myself. And to our viewers on Facebook and on YouTube, we are reaching the message with the Fivefold Ministry. And you can subscribe to Joy Tepaneku. Um, just follow all the programs. Many times we have these sessions, sometimes with other. Minister, last time with Tinashe Mayere, with the other brothers, we are rich with the uh, message, fivefold mi ministry that is enriching us. So subscribe and follow. Marriage is not to be endured, but to be enjoyed. Mm -hmm. So I know people say, no, no, brother, there is a part that you endure. That part is not marriage, that one. Hardships are not marriage, they are, they are there in marriage. Hardships of marriage we endure, but marriage we enjoy. So mm. rejoice with the wife of your youth and um, love one another. There is, let me close by giving this quote. I'll just give this quote where the prophet says, I'll paraphrase it. He talks about a young boy uh, where he says, in why people are tossed up about. He says a young fellow. He talks about a young boy who was new, I think from a Pentecostal background. He, he had a woman in the marriage, the, the wife. It was almost a divorce case. I like it when these meetings or the advice or interactions can change in almost a divorce case to be almost a heaven case of marriage. So the young man was believing that the girl is a demon and he was, she was not submissive. 
So you will go home with all the spiritual powers and say, come out of here, chasing the devil out of the girl. And the girl was getting worse and worse. And the, the boy recruited preachers to come and cast out the devil from the wife. Sometimes spiritual brothers feel like this is just a demon on this woman. Then finally, she, the boy came to the prophet and the prophet says, no, you have been doing it the wrong way. This is one hard thing for brothers to admit after all the efforts that sometimes we have been doing things the wrong way or the long way. <laughs> so mm. when the prophet says, no, just go and love your wife. Mm. It's not even demons and what, just go and love her. So the brother mm. appears with the flowers in the home and the family was changed. And the woman became a very sweet one. So love is the strongest force in the world. God bless you. Um, pray, let us pray. Our heavenly father, we thank you for this session. A lot has been said, we've discussed. Let it be that father, if we happened as we are speaking to say one thing that may have been a virus to your children, let its effects be quenched by the power of the intentions that of good intentions of love and helps to your children. Let the Holy Spirit, Father, filter everything to your children that it may empower them in their work, that it can turn cases that people are almost giving up on each other to be a heavenly case on earth. Oh, Father, where it's love and that honeymoon feeling is going on and on and on until we live in the rapture. May you bless Father Chireka and talk there, Father, for arranging and for their time as married people, Father, we have given time to impart what they have to say, such as we have, we give unto you. Heavenly Father, may you bless all the viewers on Facebook, on YouTube, those who have been listening, Father, with those who have tuned in, may they go and apply the scriptural principles to bring yes. joy in their marriage. Bless Amen. every believer as we end this Amen. session, committing everything to your hands in the powerful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Wonderful. Amen. And there is Thank you. That, that drama about love is also ready. So it's there on YouTube. That drama was acted by Brother Tapiwa and uh, the, the team. <laughs> they played that in, in drama. So we're done. Back to you, uh, Brother Fred. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Rev. We really appreciate uh, I myself, uh, we are subscribed to your channel and we will follow, uh, you know, I, I even followed one of your uh, sermons that you preached on uh, time, uh, management of time. That was a masterpiece. May the Lord bless you and uh, may he continue to prosper you in your ministry. I feel so good. Uh, you know, a lot has been said and I believe that uh, as much as I've benefited the believers uh, who have listened to our life, I know we have uh, stretched you a little bit. This is our longest session ever, uh, but it was needful. The devil wanted to just disturb it uh, at the start, but uh, you know, he likes to stop uh, things that are beautiful, things that are beneficial uh, to us as the bride. So we really appreciate, uh, and uh, uh, I've got a request there that I've already accepted. Uh, believers are saying we must have a part two to this doc. Uh, here is uh, the offer, the, uh, the believers, they want a part two. I know you've got uh, other meetings uh, scheduled, but definitely we are going to look into the calendar and, uh, you know, we will announce when we can have you again uh, for part two. I believe that it will be a tremendous blessing. Uh, let me hear your comment on that one, Doc. Part, uh, yes, it's good that before we part, we can confirm about part two. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we'll have part two. God bless you. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. We thank God for that. Uh, so uh, the Lord richly bless you. I think we have come to the end of the session. Uh, the Lord bless you with the team, with your technical team, the believers that side. May the Lord bless you. We love you. We appreciate you. Uh, keep on praying for us as we pray for you, as we continue to labor for the master. The Lord bless you. Shalom. <laughs>